Welcome to Java Video Tutorials. This is lesson four. We're going to learn about the math class and we're also going to learn the Java documentation and how to interpret it. So the first thing is uh, let's go ahead and open up the documentation and uh, so you're gonna have to go to your web browser. Here is Firefox and let's go uh, java.sun.com and there we have it. Let's go now down to this uh, APIs right here and click it. And we want Java SE 6. And we want Core API Docs uh, 6 right here. So click English or Chinese or Japanese, whichever language you may happen to speak the best. And this is going to be the documentation window. Uh, we have three different sections right here but uh, we're, we're usually I just worry about the all classes section and this main section here in the middle so let's scroll down the all classes and find the math class because that's what we are working with today M-A-T-H Matematicas right here okay so it says class math or the math class and you see it's java.lang so it's saying that it's in the java.lang package we'll learn about that later and also it extends this java.lang.object class and we will also learn about that later so right here shows the definition I'm sorry the definition of the math class so public final class math we'll learn more about that in probably oh less than five maybe fifteen not sure yet and it tells you all about the class in super detail uh, right here and it tells you it's been around since the very beginning JDK 1.0 so that's a good thing field summary this uh, this will summarize the different variables that are in the math class uh, since the math class is kind of a special class uh, and it says static for everything static double static double static double static float static int that means that you can basically access these variables without creating an object or an instance of this class. So we can just go ahead and say, hey, I want to know what pi is, and we don't have to create a math object, uh, not that we could if we wanted to. So to show you all this, let's go ahead and minimize the documentation, and I'm going to open up Dr. Java. So bear with me as Dr. Java starts turning its little engine and here we go. All right, here's Dr. Java. We're going to do this lesson in the interactions window once again. So let's go ahead and start out by typing math. And I'm going to go back to that's not it. Okay, I'm going to go back to the uh, math class here, and it says static double e. Okay, and this e is capitalized. So let's say we want to access that value. Uh, and it's the double value that is closer to it, that closer than any other to e, the base of all natural logarithm logarithms. Can't say that right. Logarithms, uh, which is about 2.718 something. So let's say math dot e, and there it is 2.718281 blah 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 blah. And now we can go math dot pi. And now this will give me 3.141592653589793 and blah blah blah. And so let's go back to the math class. And you see pi and e, they're both capitalized. Um, variables that are constants in Java are by convention, you, uh, you write them in all caps. So uh, e, even though it's one letter, it's in caps. And pi is two letters, and you put them both in caps. If you were to have you know, a huge variable name, it would still be in all caps. So let's go on to the functions now. Those were the field variables of the math class. And now if you look down here at method summary, uh, there's a bunch of methods inside this math class. Look at all of those. And they're going to help you and they're going to be great to use. So let's go through a few of them. Uh, we'll start out with absolute value. Everybody knows absolute value. It just uh, returns a positive. So we can say uh, math dot abs and that's our function and remember it's not capitalized this time 
because it's uh, not a it's not a um, constant variable. So it's just ABS, and then we it says open parentheses double A close parentheses. Double is a data type. Double means uh, it's going to have a floating point value. So uh, you can give it a you can give it a floating point value, and it will return the absolute value of a um, floating point or double value. So let's go down to Dr. Java and say, oh, what do you want to do? How about negative 3.14? And that you should probably guess will return a positive 3.14. Uh, let's go ahead and do a few more things with this. Let's say math.pi. That will give me the absolute value of math.pi. So I can do, um, you know, 57. It's going to return 57. So it'll just give me the absolute value of whichever value. Uh, let's move on to a few other math functions. We have, oh, seal. You can go through and read some of these and what they do. Um, I'm going to do a few of them. Like, I know I'm going to do max and min. So let's go back to Dr. Java and say math.max. Okay, and it shows here that you need double A and double B. Or you can have float A, float B. These are just different data types, int A, int B. And basically, it's so the function will do the same with all different kinds of uh, numbers. So we have, we're going to give it two values, and it's going to be separated by this comma character. So math.max, 5, let's just give it two easy numbers, 5 and 10, and close that off. And it's going to return the, the greater value of the 2. So obviously, 10 is greater than 5. And just to show you, if we switch them around and say 10 and then 5, we get 10. Now what happens if we say 5 and 5? It's going to return 5, which is the same value. So just kind of know that's uh, what it does. And we can also play with the min function. And let's say 7 and 22. Obviously, 7 is going to be much less than 22, uh, but what if it's 7 and 7.0001? Still going to give me 7.0, which is a double value. So here we go. Uh, pretty easy. You're, it's nothing earth-shattering. Uh, you're probably thinking, okay, uh, where's the excitement? Uh, if, if you ask me, I think it's pretty exciting learning uh, how to make Java tell you which number is bigger but maybe not so much for you. So let's do a few more. Um, how about math.random? That one's pretty exciting. So let's say, uh, first of all, I'm going to reset the uh, interactions window by clicking this reset button. Bam. Okay, so math.random. Okay, and if we go back here, it just it, there are no arguments. So it's just math.random open, open close paren. So bam, bam. Okay and it just gave me a random number. I'm going to run that again and it gave me a different random number. So let's just keep running this and you see I get all these different numbers and you're probably guessing well it's because it's random and you would be right. So uh, that gives us a random number. Now what would you do if I said uh, give me a random number between 0 and 87? Well, you're probably like, well, math.random only gives me a number between 0 and 1, uh, which is sort of true. It gives you a number between, it's kind of like this. It's going to be 0 uh, is less than or equal to 1, I'm sorry, x is less than 1. So the number that it gives you is, it could be equal to 0, but it is never going to be equal to 1. It'll always be less than 1, so it could be 0.9999999, uh, but it can't be 1, but of, of course it can be 0. So if I said find me a number between 0 and 87, then what would you do? Well, what I would do, because I already know the answer, is say math.random, 
and let's multiply that uh, that floating point value by 88 and there you see it gives me a random number between 0 and 88 which is it's, it's going to not include 88 but it could include 87 so uh, what if we want to get a just the uh, just the integer value we don't care about the decimals we just want the integer value so that could be uh, the same thing except we're gonna do something called typecasting now where we take this whole thing you put put that in parentheses and you go back to the beginning and I want it to be an int uh, we haven't learned about data types yet but this does mean integer int and we're gonna put that in parentheses and then right after that we're gonna put this expression in parentheses and it's going to now just make a random number in between 0 and 87. See how that works? Very nifty. And if you know about computers, uh, computers cannot think for themselves, so they can't truly create a random number. And uh, I believe the way Java does it is it goes off uh, the system clock like uh, in milliseconds, so it might as well be random, and they do some other stuff to the number to make it as random as possible, but remember, uh, since it is working off time, if I uh, if I run several random numbers in a row uh, real, in really quick succession, they might not be all so random. Uh, just for example, let's uh, d don't watch what I'm doing, but I just say, uh, let's see, and i equals zero, and let's run this ten times and say i plus plus don't watch this and I'm just going to say math.random okay and you can kinda see it's going in sort of a pattern here uh, not a really great pattern but we have 5, 8 and then 9 so it's getting greater and then it's resetting it's going back to 0, 4 9 and then back to 3, 6 and then back to 3 and then up to 9. So the pattern's really hard to see, but um, you know, it could could affect your answers. I can actually make this a lot closer, uh, but that'll take too long. So that that was just a simple loop that I used and uh, you don't have to know that for now. We'll learn that in probably lesson 7 or 8 or so. So let's um, go ahead and wrap this up with a few more. I did see POW here, and I want to go over POW. So let's go ahead and reset the interactions window again. It's a math dot POW, and it basically it's going to be a base, and then the power. So five to the power of two is going to give me twenty-five. And note that it returned to me a double. Uh, the pow function always returns a double, static double pow. Okay, so let's give it a 5 to the power of 5. Okay, 3, 1, 2, 5. Mm, what if I give it negative 1? It's going to be 1 over, fi 1 over 5 or 0.2. What if I give it uh, 1 half? I can even do 1 divided by 2.0. Okay, it'll give me the square root of 5. So, uh, the POW function works for, you know, any base to any power. Now, if you get too large, like if I say 5 to the power of 50, uh, you'll see 8.881 e to the 34. And uh, if I get too large, it will just eventually say infinity. So, that's just kind of an interesting thing to know. Uh, that's the POW function. Are there any more? There's round, there's, you know, all kinds of trig functions, and two degrees, two radians, pretty awesome stuff. There, don't forget you have your uh, pi and your e here. Uh, but those are all in the math class. So, pretty cool thing to know. And I think we're done with this lesson. And finally, in our next lesson, we're going to learn about uh, variables, and we're going to do some work up here in the actual writing a program window if you call it want to call it that so I'm going to go ahead and reset and we are done for today so I will see you next time in lesson 5 with variables thanks for watching